This video explains how to increase and decrease the number of access ticks in a plot using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines two to four of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame is appearing at the top right, which is called data. And we can print the first six rows of this data frame to the RStudio console using the head function, as you can see in line five of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data frame contains two columns, which are called X and Y. And both of these columns contain random numeric values. Now, if we want to draw our data using base R and using the default specifications for the axis ticks of base R, then we can simply apply the plot function to our two data frame columns, as you can see in lines seven and eight. So within the plot function, I'm specifying our column X and our column Y. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right that a scatter plot of our data is created. And this scatter plot contains the default axis specifications of the plot function. Now, if you want to change these axes, we can use the X AXP argument, as you can see in lines 10 to 14 of the code. So lines 10 to 11 are basically the same as lines seven and eight. However, then in addition to that, I'm specifying the X AXP argument, and I'm setting this argument to be equal to a vector that contains the minimum value in our x column, the maximum value in our x column, and the number of axis ticks that I want to show in between. So after running lines 10 to 14 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated. And as you can see, we have added many additional axis ticks to the x axis of our plot. So in the first example, I have shown how to modify the number of X axis ticks in a base R plot. However, I think this is even easier in a ggplot2 plot. And this is what I want to show you in the next part of this tutorial, starting in line 16 of the code. So in lines 16 and 17, I'm first installing and loading the ggplot2 package. I have installed this package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 17 of the code. And then in lines 19 to 20, I'm creating a ggplot2 plot object based on the functions ggplot and geonpoint. So after running these functions, a new plot object called ggp is appearing at the top right. And we can draw this plot by running line 21 at the bottom right of our studio. And then you can see that we have created a scatter plot, which is showing our data points with default axis specifications of the ggplot2 package. Now in the next step, if we want to modify these axis ticks, we can use the scale x continuous function, as you can see in lines 23 to 24. So in these lines of code, I'm first specifying our plot object that I have created before. Then I'm adding to this the scale x continuous function. And within this function, I'm specifying the breaks argument to be equal to a rounded sequence between the minimum and the maximum value in our data. And I'm also specifying how many breaks this sequence should have. So after running lines 23 and 24 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated. And as you can see, we have added many additional axis ticks to our plot. However, at this point, you can also see that these axis ticks are not very pretty because one axis tick is equal to minus 301, and then in the middle we have minus one and so on. So we might also be able to modify that by specifying a better sequence for the axis ticks. However, there's another function which is provided in the R programming language, which makes this even easier. And this is the pretty breaks function. And I'm showing you how to apply the pretty breaks function in lines 26 to 27. So in line 26, I'm once again specifying our ggplot2 plot object. Then once again, I'm adding the scale x continuous function to this. Once again, I'm using the breaks argument. However, this time, instead of using a sequence based on the sequence and round functions, I'm simply using the pretty breaks function of the scales package. 
And within this function, I only have to specify the number of breaks. So in this case, I want to use 20 breaks. So after running lines 26 and 27 of the code, you can see that our plot is updated once again. And this time the axis ticks are showing much prettier breaks than before. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.